Good afternoon, family. We're starting a new series. I don't know how long it's going to be until I run out of information, I guess. But we're talking about no matter what. Y'all have heard that term in recovery, no matter what. No wife, no wife, no job, no job, I guess hug, no job, no husband, no kids, no matter what. That's right. I ain't getting high. That's right. No matter what. what. And that's a beautiful thing because they they say we come to the program with reservations. Yeah. You know, and we we have and what a reservation is, just like what you do when you reserve a room or something like that. You you call and you put your money down because you're reserving that date and you have some expectations that when that date comes that room or whatever is going to be available, right? Yeah. But in recovery, we have contingencies put upon our recovery. My, my. And it's like, if this happens, I may use. Or if this happens, I may be in a vulnerable position. And, and I say this all the time, most of the things that you name are going to happen. Yeah, that's right. All right? Yeah, that's right. They're going to happen. Yeah. Most people say, if something happened to my mama, mm -hmm. and guess what, y'all? Something going to happen to your mama. That's right. If something happens to my children, well, something going to happen to your children. I don't know what, but something going to happen. That's right. If something happened to my mate, whatever, all of those things are going to happen. But what you got to say is, even if those things happen, yeah. I'm going to walk through those things That's right. clean. That's right. Because what I know is using is not a solution to those problems. That's right. And so we bury our parents clean yeah. in the program yeah. of Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous. That's right. We, if need be, we bury our children. That's right. We go through divorce. I joined this club, I almost said by accident, I guess it was not an accident, well, I know it wasn't an accident, but they were having a convention here in Dallas, and I had never heard of no matter what. But at that time, within a week, I had lost my marriage, I had lost my children, I had lost my home, I had lost my job, and I had lost my reputation. I was at one of the lowest points in my life and I didn't go to meetings a lot, but I went. And they were having meetings on the hour, every hour, for the whole weekend. And the topic was, no matter what. No matter what. And I sat in the meetings for those three days, by five or six of them a day, crying. Unlike that sister said, told me a while ago, oh, her, you know, her man that fell off, oh, I ain't never, I cried about the loss of the woman I was with. Yeah. Because I loved her. Yeah. And I loved my children. Yeah. And I loved my ministry. Yeah. And so all of that was gone. But y'all guess what? I didn't get high. That's right. That's right. I didn't get high. That's right. Getting high was not a solution. Because yeah. them people told me no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. And and if you get there. Now, we're going to learn what that means and what it don't mean. It's not just white knuckling it. Yeah. Now, I don't do anything and I just say I ain't going to get high. Right. That don't work. Right, right. You got you to do some things. That you got to go to some meetings. You got you to call your sponsor. You got to work some steps. You got to share. And then, though, even doing all of that, yeah. the desire is still going to be there. Yeah. And then you fight. Yeah. You know how the Bible says, you do all that you can do and just stand. That's what it says in Ephesians 6 and 10 when you read it. It just says stand several times. After you get through putting, it said put on your whole armor of God and all of that stuff. And at the end, you know, he just say, just stand. When you get through doing all of that stuff, obviously the fight ain't over, AJ. You still going to just have to just stand. That's how he ends it. Just stand. That's right. And that's what we have to do. Yeah. It's no guarantee that, because I done prayed before when oh, the yeah. disease is on me. Oh, yeah. And guess what? I still want to get high. Oh, yeah. I don't want you a meeting oh, yeah. and still want to get high. Oh, yeah. I don't want the church 
and still oh, yeah. wanted to get high. Oh, yeah. I done read my big book yeah. and still wanted to get high. Oh, yeah. So those are only tools. Those are not guarantees that if I do these things, right. then magically I ain't going to want to go get high. That's not how it works. No. And so, that's what we're going to talk about. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, yeah all right, he can't, he can't talk louder than me. His lungs ain't big enough. No matter what, you don't have to use today. That's the important thing. And see, we got to do this thing one day at a time, one moment at a time, one second at a time, yeah. some, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And the good news is, I ain't got to use today. today. That's all I got to do is try to make it through the day. That's right. You know, I'm about, I don't know, 40 days or something like that in, in quitting smoking. And boy, I got to fight this thing right. moment by moment. I want one now. I just want to just stop the whole meeting right now yeah. and go out there and get me a cigarette. Yeah. You know, just say, time out. Yeah. Let me go and smoke. Yeah. But I just got to get through the moment. That's right. And once I fight through it, it go away and I don't think about it. That's right. And that's the way the disease of addiction is. Yeah. And this intensity. The cravings only last three to five minutes in their intensity. Right. And they go away. But, no matter what, you don't have to use when? Today. No reason, no excuse, never again. And that's what we got to say. There's no reason that will justify me using. Think about it. Those of us who have relapsed, how did you going out and you help that situation? I don't know no situation that an addict can put some drugs and alcohol on the situation mm. and it makes it better. Wow. You know, wow. I fell off August the 1st of 1992 because this girl had threw my clothes out of the house and, and set them on fire. Wow. You know, so I fell off. I'm, I'm kind of particular about my clothes. Yeah. You know, and she burned them up. So I fell off. Wow. That, didn't, that didn't make my clothes come back. Nope. <laughs> and she still put me out. Still put you out. Yeah. I didn't get a place to stay back. And I had to go to six months of treatment and get, you know how they treat you in treatment, all of that. Yeah. So yeah. me using that day didn't benefit me none at all. I'd have been better off going on by my bed. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That didn't help. That's what the no matter what is. Y'all think about the last time you fell off. How did you getting high help the situation? Mm. 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 It gets better. Check this out. It says, an addict, any addict, can stop using lose the desire to use and find a new way to live. Now I'm going to go back and explain that. Hmm. An addict. That's what we got to first identify. Are you an addict? Yeah. What an addict is, is someone who cannot use successfully. Yeah. That's what makes you an addict. It's not how much you use. It's not the drug that you use. It is the effect that the using has on you that makes you an addict. I know some people that drink a lot and they, you know, they're not addicts. And for me, one bump send me out. I, I lose my mind. It's my reaction to it. That's what makes me an addict. You see what I'm saying? It ain't the, it's not the drug itself. It's my reaction to the drug. We got that? So, that's what makes me an addict. Yeah. Any addict. That's the good news, y'all. Yeah. That word any addict is the shouting stuff. Because yeah. that means you. That's right. An addict, any addict. That's right. See, because I thought I was so bad off 
that I didn't qualify, that I couldn't get clean. But any act, right. that means me, that means you, <coughs> can stop using. That's the physical part. Oh, yeah. Then it's the, it's, the, it's the mental part, then the spiritual part. Yeah. To stop using, that, that's just the physical part. Right. Any act can physically stop using. That's right. That's the physical. I don't have. I don't have to pick up. And then there are some things that I do to make sure that I don't pick up. Yeah. You know, it's some situations that make me more vulnerable than others. Mm -hmm. I was talking to with a sister a while ago, and she was saying, "Oh, I didn't have a problem with drinking." See, that's what those us are. What makes you an addict, y'all, is is you can't successfully use. No mood altering chemical. You're not addicted to a certain substance. You are addicted to substance itself. Got it? Now you may not be an addict, but if you are an addict, you can't go back and drink successfully. Eventually, you gonna go ziggity boom, as my friends in the country say. You know, it, that's what that's what it is. And so guess what? That that don't mean I'm flying out in the morning to Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Marijuana is legal yeah. in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Well, guess what? I ain't smoked no weed since probably 88. Mm -hmm. By her logic, I can go up there and get me some of that good good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ain't nothing gonna happen. And I can come on back. Right. Because my problem is crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody in the room who is an addict know That's you right. might not want to do that, Buster. That's right. That's right. Right? right. Because if you are who you say you are, yeah. you probably ain't coming back. I'm going to get back. In the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go ziggy the boom. Yeah. Get stuck up there and just yeah. come back by ourselves. Yeah. Because why? Because I am an addict. Any addict can stop using. That's the physical part. Lose the desire to use. That's that obsession. Yeah. And that compulsion. I can lose that. And y'all, that's worth shouting about too. Oh yeah. Because do y'all remember when the obsession would be so strong on you where you couldn't think about nothing else other than getting high. That's right. Where emotionally and psychologically the disease would be on you so bad that you would have a physical That's reaction. It. That's right. One one of the alumni brothers call it the bubble guts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, when it would yeah. get on me, I would have a physical reaction yeah. and my my stomach would go be all upset. Yeah. I gotta go yeah. to the bathroom because uh -huh. this obsession is on me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just because I got five dollars in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Five dollars would send my body yeah. into a, a reaction. That's right. And I become restless and irritable and discontent. Yeah. And I ain't got but five dollars. Yeah. But guess what, y'all? I ain't got much money, but I got five dollars in my pocket. And ain't nothing happening to me. You gotta do like them old people. You know them old men? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that old man move. That's how them old men do. They turn around and, 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 and do that money, make sure there ain't nothing there. But guess what, y'all? Ain't nothing happened. That means that emotionally and mentally, that obsession has been removed from me. And I can move and, and live life, and God promises me that. That when I am free, I'm free indeed. But that's the middle part. And the spiritual part is this, y'all. Find a new way to live. One of the reasons y'all don't stay clean, y'all keep living the same way. No, you can't just stop using and God deliver you from the desire to you, in that gummit, you go back and live the same way. You gotta find a, a what? A new way to live. You gotta find a new way to live. That means you gotta do something different. 
We have to do something new. You know, we got a sister out to make her come up here and get on tape. She, we've been trying to get her to go and have fun. This sister have an excuse every week to go and have fun. Wow. Dallas too big. She ain't got nobody to go with. She ain't got no money. She got every excuse in the world. And when she couldn't go nowhere, she was miserable as hell. And now that she can't go somewhere, she miserable because we saying go. We don't know whether to poop or go blind. Why, what's that about? She can't find a new way to live. And you gotta find a new way to live. Because what doesn't work for some of us is doing nothing. I got clean in my late 20s. And so I was young and able to dip it and do it at that time. And so I needed stuff to do. I'm old now. So I can pretty much just go home and do nothing and be perfectly fine. Because I don't get bored, none of that. You know, I have to remember that I need to do something. Yeah. You know, I have to have brothers like Herman to say, when the last time you took your wife out, you know, when the last time you done something, because you know what? I, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> A good day is not doing nothing. Yeah. That's because I'm old, y'all. Yeah. 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 But for y'all spring chickens or y'all people in here who think you're spring chickens, how many of y'all deal with boredom? <clears throat> doing nothing is a problem for you. See, y'all want to find something to do. That's what that new way of life means. And some of y'all that used to go all the time, being able to sit down, you have to learn how to do that. But we extremists, we go from one extreme to another. Now, I don't went to the couch potato one. Because I can pretty much entertain myself. But a new way to live. A new way. And, and you got to start to think about, seriously, what is that new way of living going to be for you? You got to find you some fun things to do. John 8 and 36, I'm almost through. So if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And these means just these and your actions and your moving, that you are free, y'all. You know, when, when somebody been set free, let me pose it another way. Why do you want to be clean? You got to get a picture in your mind of what's this all about? Why? One, y'all, we want the pain to stop. That's the easy one, right? Yeah. We want the pain to stop because you was hurting. But it also says, and in, 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 uh, while we're here, because I could not live and enjoy life like other people did. Mm -hmm. And so I need to figure out what is living mean to me? What does enjoying mean to me? What do I miss that's healthy? What are the things that I, I wanted to do but addiction always prohibited me from doing? That's right. You got to figure those things out. That's right. One of my favorite things to do is to travel. You know, I love traveling. You know, that's why I'm catching the plane in the morning and going and shoot. If I can find me a ski slope, I'm going to drive while my wife at work and I'm gonna, while she at work, I'm going to be on the baby side slalom. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I see some other people doing that. And I got free so that I could live and enjoy life like other people do. One of the reasons y'all don't stay clean because y'all don't get a life. Yeah. I envy AJ. I, I, I look at his Facebook page just to make myself sick, I guess. Because he always doing something. Yeah. 
yeah. excited. You yeah. know, he was at the, in, the NFL draft, yeah. grinning. Yeah. Now, I wanted to call him and say, now, how'd you get in there? Because I just heard on the news they only let 20,000 people in the, in the building. Yeah. Now, how, how did he get in there? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. Mm, he didn't have it. Oh, okay. Well, I could have got in too then. But that's what they said on the news. They said they're only letting 20,000 people in. You know, guess you had to be in. I don't know. How you got in? But guess what, y'all? We can do that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's no certain thing, but you got to figure out what your thing is going to be. Yeah. Because that's what this was talking about when it says, find a new way to live. That's big time stuff. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to end with our message. They say this is the message of N.A. Our message is hope and the promise of freedom. Addiction, that's, our message is hope and the promise of freedom. Hope. Do y'all know and remember how it felt to be hopeless? Yes. Yeah. Hopeless? Yeah. Where you had no hope at all. I remember that. Where, where my future looked so bleak and I didn't have any hope. That leads to self-destruction. Yeah. And when when they when I came into the fellowship and they started telling me that I could have these things and I could do these things, I didn't really believe it for me. First, I didn't think it was possible for any act. But then I started to accept that it was possible for an act. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean it was possible for me. I still didn't have any hope. And then I finally got some hope for me. And I started to think that, you know, maybe even me can get clean. That's right. And I started having some hope. And I started to dream again. And I started to visualize myself clean. I think that's one of the issues we can't see ourselves clean. My challenge to you for today is just get somewhere and sit and, ma and imagine yourself clean. I used to be a sales manager and, and, and I was taught that you write your goals on the paper in the morning and say how many sales you gonna get, you write it, you know, you had to believe it in order to achieve it. And then, you know, they would make us write it down, you know, and then say, now okay, what are you gonna do with this money? And I had to think this thing all the way through of what I was gonna do. And you gotta do recovery like that. Why are you here? You gotta, you gotta know that. What does that look like? Hope, y'all. Hope is hope is big. Yes. Yes. Hope is big. Yes. You know, it's like faith. That's right. Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? That's but right. you gotta have some hope. That's what that is. That's right. And the promise of freedom. That's big. That I am free. From the bondage of sin and addiction. Yes, yes. I'm free. That makes me shout. Yes, yes. That makes me shout because I remember what bondage was like. Yeah. yeah. I used more than I intended to use. I used when I didn't want to use. Mm. I done things that I didn't want to do. Mm. I went places. I didn't want to go. I was a prisoner yeah. of self and addiction. Self, self, self. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> and it was hard for me to explain to somebody that this is not me. And y'all, you got to separate you from your addiction. Wow. May not nobody else in the world be able to do that. Now, you can't expect the world or your loved one or the law to do that. All right? See, if I steal that sister money and I say, it wasn't me, it was my disease, she won't say, oh, no, no, it's you. It was you. 
Right? Yes, sir. That's what you say. When you, when you need them, man, nah, that was you. Right? Well, I know better. You know better? But guess what? Me as an addict, I got to separate mm -hmm. me. See, I'm not, I'm not my disease. I am who God says that I am. He says that I am good. Matter of fact, he says that I am very good. That's who I am. I'm free. free. Now I got to accept that and learn how to walk in it. That's the promise. The program promises me that if I work this program, I can be free from my addiction. Matter of fact, I was talking to the pastor. He said, what does that 100% mean? I said, well, that 100% means, pastor, that they said in relapse and recovery, they have never seen an addict relapse that was working the NA program. The NA program is 100%. Yeah. I'm the fallible person. Yeah, I'm the fallible person, so I got to get me in line. But check this out, y'all. You can't hold you accountable. Can't hold you accountable. We need some help. And guess what? The people that God put in our life may not sound or act the way we want them to act. That's right. You see what I'm saying? They got a job to do. That's right. And sometimes it don't sound the way we want it to sound. You know? I at 25 years I haven't worked the step since 2000, this 2018. So I ain't worked a step in 18 years. So I got me a sponsor, and I'm going to meetings. And, and he ain't got a three years clean. <laughs> and he ain't but 26. Yeah. Last time I worked the steps, he was learning his ABCs or something. <laughs> So all of that goes against everything. He young. He ain't got no clean time. You know, for three years. And I taught him. Yeah. And so when I met with him yesterday, he was going over the symbol and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, telling me, you know, you know, call me every day. And I said, well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going out of town next week. He said, well, I think phones work. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I started to fire him for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, for that. Then you know what he said? Find you a meeting up there. That's right. That's right. I'm like, man, right. this is becoming a little yeah. dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. But. That's what the program, if I want the 100%, yeah. I got to start doing those things that I don't like to do. That's what the 100% is, y'all. Right. And the reason y'all haven't gotten the 100% is because y'all won't work the program. That's right. Recovery must come first. You got to do those things that you don't want to do. That's right. So, recap. No matter what, you don't have to use today. No reason, no excuse, never again. Never again. That's a one day at a time thing. The lie is dead. The lie is dead. The lie is dead. The, and the lie is, y'all, that you can't get clean. Yeah. And you can. That's right. I gave up and said, you know what? Also, I didn't say this earlier, I didn't think I could enjoy life without the use of drugs. That's right. I had to have something, I thought. That's right. And that was a part of the lie, you know, like, shoot, how am I going to dance and, and how am I have fun without getting high? And I say this all the time, and y'all laugh at me because y'all say it, and y'all think I'm a trip as a negative, but I found out me being a trip is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and on a trip. And I get to enjoy yes, it. Because I'm the funniest cat in the world. And I just laugh at me. I think I can I think I can sing and sing well. 
I really do. I really believe that with all my heart. I think I am funny. I think I am cute. I think I am smart. I think I am nice. I, yes, ma'am, I grade my own paper. And my grade is the only one that matters. Yours don't matter. That's what kept me high looking at the paper. And looking